Hello everyone, this is Dr. Swati Mishra and I was taking your sessions on Indian Business Houses course specially designed by the International School of Business Management at Suresh Gyan Vihar University, Jaipur. And we had discussed a few business houses in the previous session. We were discussing the huge group of Reliance Industries, which is one of the iconic industries of India and how it grew, how Hiro Ambani took it to greater heights. And now Mukesh Ambani is also taking it further to greater heights. We all recognize this industry as one of the greatest industries of uh, India. And uh, in the previous session, I was telling you as to how, you know, one fine day when Isha Ambani, daughter of Mr. Mukesh Ambani, uh, the big business conglomerate uh, head, came home for uh, one summer break after uh, when she was a student at Yale uh, in 2011. And uh, she came home and she, uh, you know, wanted to submit some coursework when she told her father that in India, internet really is a problematic issue. And that was the, you know, idea inculcator for Mukesh Ambani to develop Geo. And Isha worked with a German designer to uh, bring out the new logo in eight festive colors of India to represent the diversity of country of this organization. Believe it or not, now India is currently the world's largest country when it comes uh, to data consumption. Until Geo started its commercial operations, India ranked 155th in the world in terms of mobile data consumption. The consumption rate now surpasses even that of US and China. Can you believe it? In 2016, Geo was able to add seven customers every second, which made it reach the milestone of 100 million subscribers uh, in a matter of only 170 days. All that data consumed uh, you know, by geo subscribers amount to more than 100 crore GB of data per month, which makes Reliance Geo the world's largest and only, uh, you know, telecom network to handle hexabytes of data. We had discussed a few other groups in the last session, and now we are moving ahead to uh, another next uh, group, uh, which is um, also going to answer my two previously asked uh, questions. Uh, which Indian business house owns the world's largest detonator company? And my second question was, which Indian business house's finance company founded in 1978 became a Swiss regulated bank in 1994? So the answer is none other than Hinduja Group. For uh, those who knew the answer, I will put forward my applause. But here is the news for you, um, an, an amazing fact for you. Just near the Buckingham Palace in London, the Hindujas own a 25-bedroom, 500 million USD house. Hinduja family are now the richest families uh, one of the richest families in the United Kingdom. And on the screen, of course, you can see the various different industries that are run under Hinduja's business empire, which was started way back in 1914 by a small trader from Sindh, Sate Parmanand Hinduja. He started trading between India and Iran. And five years later, he had established his first international office in Iran. Now, 100 years later, it has transformed into a multinational conglomerate with a presence of, or in over 100 plus countries and employees are almost 1,25,000 plus. In two decades, the Hinduja brothers increased their net worth by around 
1,590% from $1 billion in 1999 to $16.9 billion in 2019, according to Forbes, actually. So that is the hugeness of this group. I would also like to tell you some amazing facts about this group. Hinduja Group owns the world's largest detonator company, GOCL. That is the answer uh, to my first question. And the brothers are all Devo Hindus, totally vegetarians, teetotalers, and they all dress in a similar way in black suits and round glasses and uh, with a preference for black suits, actually. Hinduja Foundries is a five decades old company catering to the casting needs of uh, automobiles, uh, OEMs in India. And it has three manufacturing uh, plants in South India. Around 30% of the vehicles rolled out on the roads of India, whether cars, commercial vehicles, tractors, uh, they mostly have the major casting supplied by this company. So that is about Hinduja. And now coming to my second question. Yes, Hinduja Bank Limited in Switzerland was founded as a finance company in 1978 and became a Swiss regulated bank in 1994. So that is about Hinduja Group. Shall we move ahead with the next group now? Yes. And the next group, uh, before that, I would like to come back to my next question that I asked you about these uh, business houses. The Empress Mill set up in 1877 was the first major venture of which group? And... Uh, Yes, the answer is none other than Tata Group. So Tata are named synonymous with Indian industry. A name known to Indians for generations. A name which is uh, recognized so well all over India that we would, uh, you know, recognize it even in our day-to-day -day life we are touched by this brand every day a name which is uh, acknowledged for adventure achievement excellence and ethics uh, innovation and integrity perseverance and performance reformation and responsibility struggle and success. A name known for salt, software, cars, communications, perfumes, pesticides, tea, drugs, housing, hospitality, steel, and gold. So that is the hugeness of this group. A name that greets every other Indian's life every single day. The company was founded way back in 1868 by Jamshedji Nasir Tata. At the age of 29, Jamshedji Tata worked in his father's company in 1870. With rupees 21,000 capital, he founded a trading company. Further, he bought a bankrupt oil mill at Chinchpokali and converted it into a cotton mill under the name of Alexandra Mill, which he sold in profit uh, after two years in 1874. He set up another cotton mill at Nagpur, named as the Empress Mill. He dreamed of achieving, uh, you know, four main goals, setting up an iron and steel company, a unique hotel, a world-class learning center or an institution, and a hydroelectric plant. During his lifetime in 1903, the Taj Mahal Hotel at Kulaba waterfront was opened making it the first hotel with electricity. After Jamshedji's death, his older son, Dorabji Tata, came uh, as the chairman in 1904. So Dorabji established the Tata Iron and Steel Company, named as Disco, 
uh, now known as Tata Steel in 1907. Marking the group's global ambitions, Tata Limited opened its first overseas office in London. Following the founders' goals, Western India's first hydro power plant was brought to life, giving birth to Tata Power. Yet another dream, Indian Institute of Science was established with the first batch admitted in 1911. So that is the hugeness of this group. And you can see the number of, uh, you know, various industries that are uh, run under the Tata group. And uh, there is Tata Motors, there is Tata Chemicals, there is Tata uh, uh, Indian Hotel Chains and whatnot. Tata Global is there, Oriental Hotels is there. So there are a number of industries. Uh, there is a very small story that I would like to share with you that, you know, one day Jay Tata was refused entry into a British hotel because he was in India. Tata's Hotel Taj Mahal was then opened in Kolaba, being the first Indian hotel with electricity. Tata Group employs more than 5,80,000 people worldwide, which is more than Samsung, by the way. Ratan Tata, who was the chairman of the Indian conglomerate um, uh, Tata Group in 1999, faced humiliation when he, with his team, went to sell Group's pledging card business to Ford in 1999. But he came back to do a big favor. Just nine years later, by taking over the U.S. giant Mark Brands, Jaguar and Land, Land Rover, JLR. One of Mr. Ratan Tata's first assignments was the stewardship of the ailing electronics company in Tata portfolio, the Nelco. Story goes that, uh, uh, you know, the team was halfway into a journey uh, uh, and the uh, journey to Nasik and the team had a flat tire. So everybody got off and they were taking a quick break and, uh, uh, you know, someone was uh, doing something, someone was stretching, someone was chit-chatting and they suddenly realized that Ratan Tata was nowhere to be seen. And we all got confused whether he has just entered into a roadside dhaba for a quick tea or maybe is he chit chatting with some passerbys on the road? Where is he? And when they started looking for him, they found that Ratan Tata was not, uh, you know, taking a break and rather he thought that it is everyone's responsibility uh, in the team and being the team leader, his responsibility was to fix the problem which had come and he was fixing the tire with the driver and even today you know he had his sleeves folded sweat on his brows and uh, you know ties swatted off and he was working with the driver and even the driver remembers that incident even today so you know this made the managers of Ratan Tata realize that they had got a master class leadership in the in that man who was working with the driver in front of him he never thought that any job was small in 1952 tata started lakme brand of cosmetics as an outcome of a request from the prime minister jawal nehru's office in 1974 when the Chota Nagpur region had become the epicenter of the smallpox epidemic. The uh, you know, World Health Organization requested the collaboration of Tata Steel with them. The company obliged the resources and manpower. Uh, in six months, 20,500 villages and 82 towns were inoculated. And by 1975, India was declared 
free of smallpox for the first time in history. Tata Group always believes in the Parsi legend, Humata, Hukta, and Harshita, which means good thoughts, good words, and good deeds. Pardon me if I pronounced them wrong. So Tata Group was the first to start a daycare for children whose mothers were working in the companies and had no one to take care of those kids at home. It also started giving maternity leave much before it was actually thought of and as a concept and brought in as a law. They were giving provident fund before anyone else could think of it. Tata in every, is in every business, but you will never see them in alcohol business, cigarette business, tobacco business, never. More than 20% of uh, the internet's traffic goes uh, through Tata's cables. It is the world's only wholly owned fiber ring around the world. For historic reasons, uh, the Tata shareholdings in the companies had declined. And, uh, you know, by 80s, Tata has held, for example, 2.4% in Fisco, 3% in Telco, 12% in Indian Hotels, 18% in Voltas. Um, you know, <clears throat> then uh, Palanji S. Mystery, uh, you know, as for Tata Sons itself, 81% of it was owned by trusts, 17.5% by Palanji Mystery, and a scant 1.5% by the Tatas. Ironically, in Fisco, the uh, Birlas uh, through Pilani Investments owned 6% or double the Tata Sun stake in their flagship. So uh, all this was there and uh, uh, Tata was having a weak position that time and the government uh, uh, was also intervening. So the issue didn't unduly bother JRD at, time, at that time. Above all, the protected Indian company provided no impetus to you know, build any safeguards for possible corporate takeovers. He was convinced that the Tata reputation was so impeccable uh, that neither the government nor the small investors would ever throw out the Tata's from any of the companies under their management. Tata Sumo, if you remember, uh, the car got its unique name on account of being uh, named after the former MD of Tata Motors, Sumant uh, Mulgaonkar. The name Sumo is the result of joining the first syllables of his first and last name. The iconic M TV became one of the best during its era. Voltas Limited was incorporated in 1954 uh, in Mumbai. It was a collaboration between Tata Sons and Vokart Brothers. Who doesn't know this name? Tata Motors, formerly known as Tata Engineering and Locomotives Company, Telco, uh, it was founded in 1945. As a manufacturer of locomotive, the company manufactured its first commercial vehicle in 1954 in a collaboration with Dalmer Benz AG, which ended in uh, 1969. Uh, Tata Motors entered the passenger vehicle market in 1988 with the launch of uh, the Tata Mobile, followed by the Tata Sierra in 1991 becoming the first Indian manufacturer to achieve the capability of developing competitive indigenous automobiles. So in 1998, uh, Tata launched the first fully indigenous Indian passenger car, the Indica. And in 2008, it launched the Tata Nano, the world's cheapest car. Tata Motors acquired the South Korean truck company, uh, uh, Devu Commercial Vehicles Company in 2004 and purchased Jaguar Land, Land Rover from Ford in 2008. Tata Airlines, which was renamed Air India in 1946, JRD was offered the chairmanship of the airlines when the government nationalized Air India 
which he accepted gracefully in the larger interest of the airline and the nation. Tata Airlines, which was founded in 1932, in the very first year of the operations, the air parcel service made a handsome profit of rupees 60,000. At that time, 100 US dollars was rupees 312 only. So five years later, at the time of renewal of the contract, uh, Tata Airlines uh, profit had soared 10 times. Legend has it that J.D. Choksi, that time the legal advisor of J.R.D. and Tata and Sons, uh, suggested redrafting the terms of uh, profit sharing between the government of India, uh, which in fact would have cut Neville's, uh, which was a co-founder of airline who planted the idea of airline to J.R.D., uh, his profit percentage. JRD, the, uh, you know, after pondering over it for a few days, however, took a very conscientious decision to retain the original contractual terms. He opted for the ethical treatment of his partner rather than getting swayed by, you know, narrow commercial considerations. That was JRD. And that, my dear, is the essence and culture of the data. So after talking about this legendary group, let's move ahead and talk about another group. But for now, I will be uh, signing off in this session. And in my next session, we will be discussing a few more groups, especially the Vadia groups. And uh, that will be the starting one and uh, the remaining of the 14 business houses. Uh, I hope that you are enjoying these sessions uh, that I'm taking with you for Indian business houses. Uh, these, you know, Indian business houses have had such a long history and such a long culture altogether that uh, they have an undisputed, uh, legendary stories behind them. And if you go through them, you will learn a lot of entrepreneurial skills and you will develop so much of ideas and knowledge about these groups that this will actually harness your capabilities of becoming an entrepreneur in future. If nothing else, at least you will get so much of knowledge about this group that it will increase your quest and thirst to you know become a professional in future and join these groups and get associated with these huge groups in future. Indian business houses have always had a great history behind them. Though I am only discussing initial in my initial sessions, I'm only discussing these 14 business houses. But as we move ahead uh, further in our course, we will be discussing multiple different uh, you know business houses we will be also discussing some good case studies and we will be discussing some interesting uh, concepts on these case studies so uh, you know it is not discussing the success stories the failure stories because you know whenever you have to be successful you should also know about the failures and there would not be any single business house who has not tasted failures along with the success so my dear uh, you know as we move ahead in some other units of this course we are also going to study the economic policies the factors that impact uh, the indian business houses the socio-economic factors which impact them. We'll be also studying the government policies and government regulations on the Indian business houses, uh, the five-year plans that the government came up and how they were impacting the Indian business houses. So there is a lot to learn in this course. I hope that all the viewers are thoroughly enjoying uh, going through these sessions and my efforts will be to bring out more and more knowledge for you people to make it more interesting for you and 
thank you so much for being such a patient listener and uh, we'll be meeting in the next session with some more discussions on some and some more detailed discussions on some other business houses as well so this is dr swati mishra signing off from international business management school um uh, from suresh gyan vihar university jaipur thank you so much